Marriage life is one of the things being looked up upon by every young couple. How important is a wedding compared to marriage and dowry? Is it a necessary step to go through a wedding? What exactly are you supposed to prepare for between a wedding and marriage? Stay tuned as we learn more on today's topic on the marriage classroom. Yes, good evening. Good evening. And welcome again to the marriage classroom. And I believe that this so far, or so far we can say so far so good. We've learned. We are learning. We will keep learning. That's one I will promise you. And because there is no graduation for this class, even after you get engaged, you get married, and you start now new marriage, you still will not graduate. OK? So but the learning continues. So welcome, our viewers. I believe that. Uh, You've joined us, and if you're a young person, you realize now you are part of this class. And at uh, you're also very welcome. So we are learning. Last time we were looking at uh, those things that make us you know, wonder why we have so many sisters, we have so many brothers in the church, but people are still talking about, I have no one to marry. And I believe that we have learned, or we learned that we still have those that we can look for who have those qualities and we're still discussing more. So today again we look at the issues of dowry, marriage or wedding and marriage. Why? Because some of the questions we have had so many young people asking about when it comes to issues of marriage and wedding and all that are some things that either discourage them and maybe I would want to know or to hear from ourselves what exactly part of, you know, you know there's those sometimes when you ask, what part of no don't you understand? I wanted to ask you, if we are talking about these words of dowry, wedding, marriage, and maybe we start with dowry, what the, comes into the young man's or, or the young woman's mind when it comes to the issue of dowry? <laughs> yes, so. Maybe cattle. Cattle? Uh huh. And the notion of buying women. Cattle uh -huh. yeah. and the notion of buying mm -hmm. women. Uh huh. Yes, uh, Martin. I think dowry is mm -hmm. a form of compensation mm -hmm. where maybe you compensate the parent for the what they have done for their child. Yeah, so dowry is being taken as a way of compensation. Now that you're taking their daughter, you have to compensate for all that they are going to lose. What? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, to me, uh, when I hear about the word dowry, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, during these times, mm -hmm. it's very different from the past, mm -hmm. like how our parents used to do it. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the past, uh, it was maybe a form of compensation, maybe buying a lady. But uh, to this generation, mm -hmm. I don't think because um, to me, I see it as a form of appreciation. Mm -hmm. Like you just appreciate because I don't think if somebody can buy me, like mm -hmm. the world and everything. Like also, you, you see, like maybe uh, in the past, they were looking at level of education, blah, blah, blah everything but now we have everybody's learned everybody has tried to build on whatever they have mm -hmm. so uh if a man pays dowry it's just like a form of appreciation and um, i can still also do it mm -hmm. appreciating uh, the nini because it's not that i'm lucky to find him mm -hmm. because um he's also like to find me so okay. it's it's, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily about buying and compensating. Okay. Uh -huh. Stephen. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe mine was a question. Mm. Uh, as you had said earlier, mm. you said that marriage is an institution and an institution on us things to be <laughs> certificates. And mm -hmm. a friend of mine, I had him describe marriage like the part of the diary. He said that it is the fee structure. So how valid is that statement? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now the dowry is the fee structure yes, of the... in that institution. Yeah, in that institution. So <laughs> before you get the certificate, pay the the, the fees. Yes. Wow, fee structure. <laughs> Mwendwa. Yeah, dowry mm. to me is a confirmation to mm. the parents that I what, what I'm trying to do to your daughter is serious. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. But I can go and take care of your daughter. Mm-hmm. But by paying uh, some amount of money, uh, paying some cattle, mm-hmm. but I'm serious with this marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, too. Uh, does the amount of money or property that you give really symbolize the seriousness? Or you can give less and you are more serious? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the things that we want to ask ourselves. Can you give less and you are very serious? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, Annette. Okay, what I found funny mm. was uh, from definition of dowry from the dictionary, mm. it is about something paid to the man. But now in African perspection, dowry is a form of appreciation of honor to the lady's side. So It's supposed to be on the other side. According to what I read, I, I think um, we we got to understand the different cultures. Eh? Mm. Uh, in India, it is the one the lady who bring, who pays the dowry. Actually, the one mm-hmm. dowry is actually taken from that culture. Mm. Uh, only that it was extended. It's the, the the lady because as you come, you are coming with a greater burden. You know, after all, you also bear children and those children. So you come. With you pay as a lady, you are the one to pay the man's family, uh, or your family is the one to pay the dowry. In Africa, in most of Africa, it is the men who pay the dowry to the to the lady. So those things are cultural. We, I think, we are uh, being caught up between the old culture and modernism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. I have an issue or a question on how to mitigate, you know, dowry, there is a ceremony mm-hmm. and we find that in our African culture there are a lot of practices that we may question as Christians, how do we mitigate them, like you have to bring traditional mm-hmm. alcohol to the wazes mm-hmm. and you are Christian and mm-hmm. the second issue is how to mitigate two people from different tribes mm-hmm. that want to pay dowry, but this side is say we pay this way, the other one is say we pay this way, how to medicate the same. Yeah, and that's why we are discussing about the question of dowry, because we may ask ourselves, is it Christian or not Christian? Let me ask that question. Is it Christian to give a dowry? Is it unchristian? Or is it godly or is ungodly? I guess it's godly. Mm-hmm. Now it comes to be ungodly with the practices that uh, the people in uh, in, in concern mm-hmm. are doing now. Like for us, cambers, like there is uh, that ceremony where blood is shed. Mm-hmm. So I guess the, this these practices that raise uh, suspicions are the ungodly. But I don't think dowry entirely is ungodly. Mm-hmm. Yes. I also think uh, that is godly. Uh, uh, when you look uh, in the Bible, the story of Jacob, uh, he paid dowry for Leah and also for Rachel. And uh, I guess um, it's us, uh, maybe the culture that is within us. But um, I also believe that there are some culture, they are doing it right. Though we have, um, there are those I think, like, personally, uh, whatever I'm, I've been seeing in our family, it is something that is just normal. We just have a, 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 a ceremony. The, the man comes, introduce the wife, they, they, they see, they talk, they pay, and everything is done. Like, we don't have so many, uh, though I hear from other people that they have, they have to shed blood, they have to do all that. But to me, I think it is godly, and if we do it right, it is okay. Okay, now we, you have talked about something that is there in the Bible about Jacob uh, paying a bride price. Uh, we call it a dowry for the two ladies, Rachel and uh, Leah, which he was, you know, was quantified in the years of service. The fact that he was to work seven years for one and seven years for the other, so that he's like he has paid for, we use the word paid, for the ladies. And uh, as much as we, we, we know that uh, the word dowry comes from, uh, it's foreign, there is a form of that which has been practiced 
in the Christian circle or also even the traditional. And I think the most important thing is to ask ourselves, you know, why is it being done wrong? And as she says, and uh, we have the part of the appreciation. As she said, I wish that would be what it is because indeed, if there is that part you've taken, you know, it is a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Now, in mostly in the African culture, you realize the living seems to be like that. The woman is always like leaving his father, the, his mother. Yeah? He seems to be the one who has left. And it's like, and the, the thought is that once you leave, it's like now you no longer belong to your family. So you have come to be part of this family. So it was taken like, now that you have come and it's like, now you're in a new family, you're in addition to the new family. Now where you have left as a gap, leave some appreciation of that. But you realize in this, as we look at this time where, well, you know, in the times that we are, each one of them is living. It's not only the man, but also the, the wife. And both of them are coming to make a new home. So I believe that in every way, if these things can be interrogated in the times that we are in, because the problem is the abuse that is going on, where you find that it is taken as a way of enrichment. This is what I will ask for. And not even it may not even be the idea of the parent. But I saw another time in a social media somebody talking about, you know, the lady saying that, uh, you know, even quoting what would be her bride price, you know, in millions. I mean, if you don't have it, don't come to my home. And you're wondering exactly why would I, okay, not really, I don't want to use that waste. But I'm wondering is that, can you be quantified, as we say, with money? In the last class, the question was, even the scripture as is asked in uh, Proverbs that one verse 10, a noble woman or a virtuous woman who can find. What is her price? It is even more expensive than rubies. rubies. And yet it has not been put there that this is her price. So can you say, if you don't have five million, don't come in. The dowry can never be enough to buy a woman. So whether you are giving a hundred million or even ten thousand shillings or one thousand shillings if that is what you can afford that does not mean that you have not are you you i mean let's say like you cannot say that uh, i have really bought somebody it Thank should you. be a form of a publication i i think you can add some here. input that okay. i want to put here yeah that uh, the, the the notion right from the beginning somebody said uh, the notion of buying and if you go to some of our languages uh like Kikuyu, it's actually the word that is translated for giving dowry is buying. Mm. Actually, directly translated is selling and buying. Mm. And uh, when you look at that, that notion sometimes gets into the hearts of people. And the problem is commercialization. Mm. It is commercialized. You, if you look at traditionally the way that thing was done, because there are several aspects that we need to interrogate, the way it was done, somebody was being asked for a commodity that was very available and that was cows sheep and those people had those things and even the one who did not have was actually allowed to marry get the wife go and get whatever you get you'll be bringing a little at a at a time so basically what we are saying is that the problem is commercialization number two there are some young men who also come and say I don't want, because of that commercialization, I don't want to buy. Or you have the notion that they are asking me for too much, which could be because of the commercialization. But there are these two things that we want to say. Depending on the cultures, you find like not only Jacob, we have mentioned Jacob. When Abraham sent his servant to go and look for a wife for Isaac, he went with very expensive. You remember it was even gold. Eh? Yeah. He, he went with very expensive things to as a gift. But we don't find a negotiation whereby he told, whatever you have brought us is too little. We don't find that negotiation. But it can also be abused, and we find one abuse in the Bible also. Whereby, when because Saul had promised uh, David that whoever kills Goliath will be given uh, the daughter, 
He goes and tells the, uh, David. David says, I have nothing. And that is another thing that young men people, you know, young people fear, mm. saying that I have nothing. It is very much in order. Uh, so, but he was told, okay, you have nothing, but all I require of you is a hundred uh, Philistine foreskins. Now, it was it meant that he was going to war. And what Saul was intending is that David may be, die in that war. But he went and won because he went also with a positive mindset. And men who are nasema ya kwamba, ate you are very far away from your from the where the railway line is, and your father in law to be tells you, mimi ile kitu nataka ni ya kwamba ulete mpaka dairy mpaka kwangu. Na iwe na 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 train ambayo itakuwa ikinitoa hapa inanipeleka. My friend, fear not. Even now, whatever, fear not. Tell, go and have a negotiation, not one-on-one -on -one with the wazes and everybody, with that particular person and tell him, I believe that what you are saying is that the Lord is going to bless me. He's going to bless me with what you are asking. But right now, I do not have. But I want to marry your daughter. Sometimes some of these people will be moved by the courage. Personally, when we went to their place, I was asked for things that I did not have. So I told her, what I'm going to do is and I want to mention two things in, in relation to that. One of the things that I'm going to do is that please ask your mother uh, to that uh, to you know inform her that we'll be coming on a certain particular day. So of course she called the uncle, two of the uncles only, and even the spokesperson who was also in the neighborhood was not invited that day. And I did not go with the wazes. I went with the two friends. And I sat there and I said, Mom, ni mimi nilisema ya kwamba ni kuje kwa sababu wana waze huwa tunatulikuta wakiwa meketi pale na wale ambao wote ambao tulikuwa tumekuja na wao hawa takuweko tukiendelea na maisha na wewe kama mama na mimi kama mwanao. Kwa hivyo vile nimesema ni ya kwamba nimekuja tuonge mtoto na mama yake. Nikamwambia mama, mimi nataka kuheshimu Mungu na ninataka kukuheshimu. Kwa hivyo mimi nafanya doa takatifu. Lakini ile vitu ambayo niliitizwa na wazee sina. I don't have. But I want to, 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 to do a wedding. So can you allow me to marry your, uh, your, your, your daughter? And whatever other things that were asked there, there I will bring them by and by as the Lord continues to bless us. My, mother, my late mother-in-law told me, fanya hivi, kwa sababu you were told to come on a certain day, wewe enda na ukuje na kile chochote ambao utakuwa nacho. I went to their place with 3,000 shillings and I was allowed to do the wedding. Simply we are saying, even this time that, uh, even if somebody wants to abuse that, you can, unaeza jitetea. Number two, yeye mwenyewe alinitetea. And as I, I think the ladies also can talk about if you love this man and you're going to start a family together. Hata wewe ukiona your husband to feel be an apinyiliwa. Si hata wewe umtetee. Yeah, ninitetea akasema ya kwamba you know mom some of those things we don't I don't think we need to have, to fulfill because even if there was anything I'm not the first born. I'm the fourth born. So, but the only reason why we are coming to you is because we ought to honor God and we want to honor uh, you as our parents. So, young men, fear not. Gitia gufu. Face that man, one on one, mundu kumundu. Yes, actually what we, are, we want to say to you and to the other young people that fear issues of dowry. Let me tell you, any parent who sees a courageous man get through the gate and say, dad or mom, this is my intention. Let me tell you, any, pa any parent right now or watching me would know that is a very great honor. Very great honor. Many don't even have those chance to know who was with their daughter and even what happened. Only when there is harm, that's the time they realize, and by the way, your daughter is like, and you know, I believe any young man who goes home to a parent and says, I want to have your daughter to be my wife would respect her and would indeed take care of her. 
and not harm her like there is. I know there are cases, but sometimes there is that, that part of honor and respect that we should also, should also give the parents, okay? So, kijana hata kama huna kitu tafadhali, lakini ukona matumaini, ukona maono. You know, you can sit with the, the dad of the, the girl and ask him, kijana, sasa, wewe unafanyaga nini? What do you want to do? Muambie ya kwa hata kama niwe ya kujega reli. Umepanga hiyo. Though, at this time, you may not be having it. Akiona ukona maono. Let me tell you, any father would know a young man who has a vision and would not prevent the daughter from getting married. Okay? And I've and seen and maybe, others. Maybe one of the things that we should also talk to our viewers who are parents. Please respect that young man who comes home. Because respect is both ways. Yes. Let us not have issues of commercialization, of dowry. Now, you want to recover. You know, I have had even some families saying, when she was young, she, knew she blo broke how many plates? Especially <laughs> the, the relatives, you know, the aunties and so on. Uh, who come and say, when she was young, she broke this number of plates. We have educated her. Now, most likely by the time that you are saying you have educated her up to form four, most likely she's also getting married, married to somebody who is also educated to that level. So it is, their, it is their family that they are beginning. And thank God that you laid a good foundation. So let's uh, parents not commercialize this thing. Mm -hmm. If yeah. the young man comes with whatever gift that they have, and I'm saying that as a father of a daughter, you know, uh, so the young man who is now going for my daughter in future, you can be sure of that, eh? no commercialization. We are saying, I ask, you know, it is, it is good for you to give the young man the leeway and give them the blessing. Once you bless them, I am sure that they will become also a blessing to you, even as you age. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, we, we are understanding exactly why it is important to understand why the dowry is there. If you have a gift, please appreciate those parents. But if you don't have, and then ukipewa, uziponyoke, you know, you dress umeponyoka na pick up. I mean, you don't go and don't come back. It's not like you have bought goods. So you have been given somebody's daughter. If you had a promise that I, God blesses me, I will do this, please honor that. Okay? Don't say I have children to feed and all that. Hata kama nikitu kidogo tu, you come and appreciate. Mom, thank you. Dad, thank you. You gave us, the, you, you blessed us, and this is it. And you continue, and you have those blessings. Yes, I can see my, uh, that is, uh, hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. I am not a parent, yes. but I would like to add on what he has said. Yes. Uh, I think also educating a girl is part of a par parental responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's not True. It's not the obligation of the person who's coming to marry the girl to repay that fee and all of that. If the parents wanted, mm -hmm. they would have also as well not taken the girl to school. True. So I think it is their responsibility as parents, and they should not place that on somebody else or transfer it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, so that is children, whatever type of, I mean, we say children are a blessing to the, I mean, are a blessing to the family. So you are educating your children, so you're not educating somebody's wife. I mean, I can't, you can't bring her at Unazam, Toto, Kiona, Toto, Kaga, Unazema. Unajua, you, I'm educating you because you'll be somebody's wife. No, you bring them up as children, Give them all that they need, okay? As children, not as somebody's wife or somebody's husband. Yes, Paul. Oh. I'd also like to add on the commercialization. I think it's one of the reasons why there's some violence in families mm -hmm. because the man feels mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I have to teach you the way I want. I bought you. Mm -hmm. So if I say something, you have to do it. You are my property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah only because you bought. Eh? So you can beat uh, anyone, you can even harm them because you are ready. Mm -hmm. You say, this is my wife, I bought her, okay? It's, that is not right. Yes, Martin. So I think on the issue of dowry, mm -hmm. yeah, where I come from, from Meru, mm -hmm. so you find some, maybe there are people that have been dating maybe for many years, but when it comes to parents, mm -hmm. when they go to, to the side of the parent, mm -hmm. So you see that uh, the parent refused the boy mm -hmm. because he doesn't have certain qualities. But the girl now, Anasema, Ata Musipo, Tuluhusu, I have to marry this man. Mm -hmm. So when it comes uh, to Dawale, I think is a, uh, do we need uh, 
blessings from the parents so that we can continue with the maybe to wedding. Yes, we need it. You see, as much as you are escaping the dowry, there is also that part of honor your father and mother. I believe by the time you say, I want to go away, you see the issue is this, again, uh, it's also as uh, young people, sometimes we, we miss it out to think that love is all that it will take for us to get married. Sometimes those parents, sometimes they may be diffusing because they can see some things. It is important that you sit together and ask, dad, mom, why don't you want this young man? Maybe sometimes it is issue of, they may not come out clearly about money, but when they realize you are set on it, then you realize they will let you. But if it is some issues about tribe and all that, those are things that you can also talk to your parents and tell them. And in case if it is the issue of uh, tribe and all that, nothing material, then that is where you tell them, man, dad, I wanted to honor you in this, and that's what I will tell you, but on this, but don't just elope. I think that would be wrong. What happens? Once a man or in that family, somebody says you disrespected your parents, the, you know, either we say this in Kikuyu, hakuna mtu ana werira agidhita agisha oka. What happens? I've realized. These young people or somebody says, ah, my parents don't want, you go. Once he realizes, you don't have the backing of your parents. They now start mistreating you because they know you can't go back. Okay, they already know who call, hata ukienda na useme watakwabia, tisi tulikwabia. Okay, so we, so we want you. So you will suffer and be abused because you know very well you didn't have the blessing. It's very important. Anytime when people, I mean, uh, elope in the form of that parents are not agreeing, even when they are in problems, they are not able to consult the parents. Maybe I would want to say that uh, as much as we say that uh, marriage is a godly con con covenant, there is the social aspect of it. And if we could be able to all of us get into marriage with number one, the heavenly blessings, God's blessings. And you know God will bless that union when it is holy matrimony. Number two, it is important for us to get parental blessing. And in case of the, where there is no parent, the person who serves as a guardian. Mm -hmm. And number three, it is important if you could be able to get the blessings of the church. And I've said that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the way that I regard as very important. Now, if the parents at any one given time make it, it's good to always, after all that's why we call it negotiations, isn't it? It's good to negotiate with them. What I'm saying is that the lady and the man to, who is going, you know, the, the, the fiancé, mm -hmm. need to be on the same side. Need to be on the same side. Very critical. If the, the lady is siding with the parents and the man, you know, or, or, or they try to squeeze as much as possible from the, 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 the man, the man. It, number one, the relationship may end up break, breaking because they don't have, maybe the young man does not have. Mm -hmm. But number two, we are saying there is a potential of abuse, or even if there will be no, no potential for abuse, it may affect the, the, the relationship negatively. Mm -hmm. So I think it is very, very critical. And for the parents, once again, we emphasize, please do not commercialize that. And secondly, let your reasons for it be very, very genuine. Mm -hmm. Let it not be about how much I am getting, mm -hmm. and let it also not be about tribe, because we are all children of God. Sure. Last, for, on the same, uh, from Moffat. Yeah, just an addition. Uh, one thing that uh, parents need to understand is that uh, this man is coming to marry our daughter, and is going to become part of this family. And uh, when we finya this man, in terms of asking for 10 million uh, as a bright price, uh, we forget that this man sometime will need their help. And that we can finya, we are chasing them away from this home. And secondly, I have a question. Uh, we are Christians, and uh, we are doing this thing in the Christian way. There are things that happen during the dowry uh, payment, mm -hmm. whereby we have celebrations, shedding of blood, and many other things. Yes. As Christians, should we subscribe to these things because the parents insist that this must be done? So as Christians, what should we do in that perspective? Let, let, let me answer the last bit, huh? because the other one was a comment. Mm -hmm. Let me answer that bit that uh, when it comes to issues of sacrifices, mm -hmm. 
and connecting um, uh, 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 somebody or the two of you with the ancestors by shedding of blood. For us as Christians is a big N-O. No. And that is why there is, again I'm saying it is uh, negotiations. People need to actually say that we are honoring you, we are honoring uh, God. And when it comes to the choices of following what you want and following what God wants, then we will go with what God wants. I think it is good to be assertive in some of those things, do it in a, with a lot of respect, but be very, very assertive. If it is the issue of gifting the parents, mm. I, I have no problem with that. But the very moment that it goes to sacrifices, even when it comes to obedience, the Bible says very clearly mm. that we obey authority, except in the issue of worship. Mm. When you look at right from the beginning, mm. the reason why Daniel disobeyed the, 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 the king, the reason why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego disobeyed, it was they did not disobey in any other area apart from the issue of worship. worship. When it comes to sacrifices and Sidui, our ancestors and so on, please and re, uh, pouring libations to them, yeah. that one to us as Christians is a big no. That is a worship of other gods. Yes. So, and for you as a Christian, you are worshiping the living God. In that way, you have said no. This is our gift. This is our precision. precision. And in the issue, even where there is like, uh, you are told to buy beer. No. If you, that is not, uh, if you know this is not right, you just say, this is what I can do. And this is my gift. And I appreciate you. You just appreciate it in that way. So it's important. Let's move on. Now, the other issue that also has young people wondering or having challenges is about the wedding. Yes, and some are wondering, must I do a wedding? Should I do a wedding, a big wedding and all that? Let me ask, what about the wedding sometimes makes young people wonder? I will have a challenge in this. Issues. Tell me about them. Yes, Martin. So I think when it comes to wedding, most of the Christians they do wedding, but uh, you find some marriages are not working. So as we young people, is a challenge because maybe you have seen people wedding in the church, mm -hmm. and after maybe two years they have broke up. Mm -hmm. So it is a challenge. We personally ask myself, is not a must I do a wedding? So that I can get, yeah, so to be frustrated maybe in future. No, you conduct a wedding in public where you, there is a witness, there are the witnesses that you are together. But when it comes now, after now you have conducted a wedding, you break up. So it will bring a shame to the, to the people that you witnessed you getting married. So now, the, the, does that mean now you you cross over first without any witnesses, <laughs> so that no one sees you there, so that kuki to kuki wa ba ya unatoka akuna mtu adi juu. Is that there? Okay. You start saying we were not married. She was not. She was only a partner. <laughs> you remember the yes. husband partner? Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. There is also the <coughs> issue that is coming up. People are saying that the vows should be removed when doing the marriage. There are some people coming up saying that the in sickness and in health they should remove that part. Watch a wedding could be like your part. People saying that. Because they are going to break them. They should remove them. What's oh. your view on that? Yeah, it's an imagination. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, there is also. Um, I think this is just a wrong notion that you have to do a big wedding, mm -hmm. something uh, that you have to to be shown on TV and all that. Mm -hmm. I think that is something that is affecting young people, mm -hmm. and um, maybe too we we can we can we can we can just like the way we have we have. Uh, Malima said, like, it's good to have also the church blessing. Mm -hmm. And maybe the church blessing is the wedding that you normally do in the church. And, and But it's not necessarily uh, having that big wedding. And for, my, for me, I tend to think uh, doing a wedding, actually for maybe uh, 
a, 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 a man and a lady, it doesn't have to, to really be your thing. Let it be uh, like something that is, is a family, church, friends and all that. Because uh, when you take it like you, it is yours and you see you'll have that burden of wanting to go and get a loan to do it, you want to go and all that. But if you involve people, I'm very sure that um, it will not even cost you so much mm -hmm. because the friends will be there to chip in and family will be there, church will be there. And wedding is something that is good. People will be happy to see you uh, doing it. So people will celebrate and people will be willing to do it. So uh, for me, I think like me, I always want to do a wedding. So like I'll not look for, I'll, I'll not want it to be maybe big or what, but just having people supporting me. I think that is the best, best line of it. Wow, okay. Let me hear it from Stevie, then uh, uh, we'll get Victor. Uh, mine is a comment I had somewhere that prepare for your wed for your uh, marriage mm -hmm. more than you prepare for your wedding. Mm -hmm. How is that statement valid? Correct. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now prepare for the marriage more than the wedding. Yes, you will come to it. Thank you. That was. Good. I think another concern that is also associated with the quote unquote the bigness of mm -hmm. the wedding mm -hmm. has to do with the financial commitment. Mm -hmm. I, th I don't think having a big wedding is an issue, especially if you have the right support mm -hmm. system. But um, it is, I think it is a wrong notion if you have to commit so much in doing a wedding mm -hmm. and um, maybe quote unquote forget that there is a future for you in marriage. Mm -hmm. yes. Like what uh, Steve is saying, uh, what, uh, today, uh, coffee, <laughs> I, have, I have just a concern. There's this thing called the wedding committees. Uh, I, I, am yet to, I am yet to understand how they operate and how they come in and what goes on in that. You just find yourself in a wedding committee and you're asked to raise funds. And I don't know, maybe we'll shed light on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wish us so today is all the issue you think <laughs> about what is the, about the deal about the wedding, eh? I also have a question mm -hmm. in terms of the venue mm -hmm. of, um, you know, uh, having the wedding. As, uh, as Christians, you know, the, like there's that notion, like mm -hmm. as Christians, you shouldn't have a, maybe a garden wedding mm -hmm. or that which we pick from the Western culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the venues. Yeah, does it become more Christian in church or else? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have a concern on that also. Yeah. Who should contribute to that wedding? Is it the bride or the bridegroom? <laughs> Where does the contribution come from? <laughs> like, who is going to finance it, finance him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, where do the finances come from? Uh, from bride? Uh, that is man or woman on the whichever side, isn't it? Yeah, because there, there was yeah. also a post mm -hmm. I read sometimes back. It was men should not form wedding groups in WhatsApp for contributing to, towards paying bride price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it is your wife, you pay. You are on your own. You should not invite other people to help you. <laughs> <laughs> you pay yeah. on your own. <laughs> now, who should finance you? Is it the man and the woman or other people? Of the church. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me first we get that one and then now we interject on that. Let me get just the comment here yeah, first. Okay. I I I also have a question uh, in line with uh, what he has said. Uh, I have a lecturer who keeps saying when you're doing a wedding, don't add me to those wedding committees because I won't give anything. Uh -huh. Because I because like the way he has said, uh -huh. if the wife is yours, uh -huh. you're the one who's supposed to work it out, the two of you, and find out how you're going to wed. Mm -hmm. So I have a question in that line. Mm -hmm. How different is a wedding done in an ages office and that that is done in a church mm -hmm. and even the one that they call traditional? Because the, the, the concept here, the idea here is just to make sure that we are marking our entry into marriage. Mm -hmm. So how wrong is it or how right is it or what is the variation between having an, a wedding in an ages office and doing a church wedding and also doing a traditional wedding? Mm -hmm. Maybe last comment on that. Okay, I have a question. It is about mm, finances. Mm -hmm. There are some issues uh, roaming around that contributing to some people's wedding. Mm -hmm. Some people might be having bad 
like yo nesemi aje yeah bad intentions mm. with their money mm-hmm. which you are like so how applicable is that <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I've, yeah, I've had some people are saying that uh, you keep asking people for money and some of them, uh, they take it to the witch doctor and so they bring it. Even as much as they are part of your committee, they'll give you 2,000, lakini yeah. that was the purpose. You know, okay, people have <laughs> many things. Now, uh-huh. Would you want first we respond then, or you want to add just on this? No, I think uh, on the issue of dowry, there mm-hmm. is a issue that the hope raised about the man paying mm-hmm. so that maybe in future he can be saying, I'm the one who paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is it, uh, I think it is good even for a lady mm-hmm. to contribute on paying dowry. Yeah, you <laughs> 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 I will contribute yeah, now on this. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, 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 that's it. Okay. Yes, I want that. The, the issue, millicent raised, maybe mm-hmm. I echo, is is a Christian allowed to not go for the church wedding, the right one, but go for the for the wedding? You know, the one the man comes to the house and makes the intentions known. Is it proper? Can we say that? Maybe because the wedding one, the white one, may be expensive. Is it okay that a Christian maybe just do the meeting family, and is it allowed? And let, call let, it a wedding. Let, 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 let me let me let me now the interjection that I wanted. Uh, eh? Yes. Let, let me uh, come there, and uh, one state this because I realize that uh, there are so many issues that have been mentioned. But yet we have not even tackled that. that, that. But in the interest of time, let me say this, that uh, in Kenya, uh, the issues of marriage is governed by a, a law. Uh, and this is the Marriage Act. And the Marriage Act actually allows any Kenyan to get, uh, let me not mention the ones where Christi- non-Christians are, but of course we have the Hindu, we have the Muslim and uh, with their implications, but for then those people who don't belong to that religion and because majority people of the people associate with the Christianity, there are three options which are uh, mentioned. Number one is where you go and give the dowry and quisha. You simply go after that and register the register that with, yeah. with, the, with the register of marriages. That is called a traditional marriage. And that traditional marriage is it said it is either polygamous or potentially polygamous. From all of you look at the word potentially. And it is the law. If, if you go that direction. For Christian marriage is the one that is solemnized by, again answering your question, by a church minister. Not in the church. It is, does not say in the church in the law. It says it is uh, celebrated by a church minister officiated, officiated mm. by a church minister mm. the other one is where you go to the registrar of marriages people used to say arusia dc eh? mm. but it has been moved from there mm. to the ag you know or a representative of the ag mm. and it is uh, registered the one for the ag the one for the church are monogamous marriages from beginning to the end till death do you part so basically what i, I wanted to say is that uh, sometimes we have the the, the ro- uh, wrong notion concerning this there are so many issues that have come up probably uh, mm. i'm wondering whether we now, cannot what be able we can to do, do is we will tackle it in the next lesson when you'll be looking at the issue about what about marriage and weddings wedding, wedding and marriage yes, yes. Mm. but this is very important that when we are talking about the the options as a christian because i remember we said now we are thinking and we are looking at the christian worldview are we together? What would God prefer us to do? It is this way. When it comes to the church, this is because we want God also to be a witness. I uh, want us to read this uh, verse, the last verse, in, uh, if somebody can get us. Malachi 2, uh, verse 15, very fast. Mm-hmm. Hope you want to read for us. Yeah, it says, But did he not make them one having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one is six godly offspring? Therefore, take heed to your spirit, and let none deal tre- treacherously with the wife of his youth. Uh, is it fourteen that talks about God being the witness to the covenant? Uh, read fourteen. Mm-hmm. Fourteen. Yes. 
Yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously, yet she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Yes. Now, the issue is this. When we are talking about the marriage, when God is the witness, it is important that it is done in the honor of God and also honor of the parents. So what is the most probable place to do it in this honor? Let it be done in church. You know why? And I'm not saying within the building, as he said, you can have a garden wedding. But what is the ceremony? Or who is in charge of the ceremony? And what is the purpose? It is in the honor of God, even to show that we are celebrating our marriage because we have waited and have been in purity as we wait for this day. There's something also we will discuss later on the issues of uh, you know, or purity when it comes to uh, marriage. So the best option for a Christian is to do it, what we call a Christian wedding, okay? Whether you are going to go to the church uh, boardroom, both of you, and you, you are going to, and you, you, uh, you, you are officiated even in the church boardroom, but it's in the presence of God and by a church minister. The traditional one is what we say, that you know, you go traditional and say you are Christian, when they tell you to do all those things we are saying ungodly, remember you are taking that route, okay? So you cannot reach there and say, I'm not going to uh, cut a kitchen, I mean, it's not kitchen, chicken. Kitchen. And then you are poor, <laughs> and not kitchen. And the same again, sometimes we avoid, this is usually a shortcut or a short route where we try to either not have the bother of the church and also the bother of the parents, but usually at the end of it you realize the reasons why we take this is sometimes we don't want to look critically at the things that need to be addressed. Maybe uh, we will look at that much more. Thank you and uh, we will interrogate this further in the next class. Thank you. Stay tuned for the next lesson to get an understanding of dowry, wedding and marriage. To get the notes of today's lesson, visit www.mbcimedia.com stroke TMC. Catch the repeat of the Marriage Classroom every Tuesday at 10 p.m.